Alright, so now that I've got the head assembly put together, the next thing I want to start working on is uh, building the frame assembly. And I have the two frame sides here. And what I'm going to do uh, before I start that assembly is I'm going to go ahead and take care of the battery tray drop mod uh, that seems to be very popular with this particular style of frame. This is the, uh, the original uh, style frame. Uh, and uh, basically, it has the battery tray um, flat across the top. Uh, this was the way the Align version came out as well. Uh, and then later models kind of dropped that down. And the reason is uh, there was a problem with clearance between the bigger battery packs and the canopy. So it's very popular with this particular frame design to go ahead and, uh, and drop this uh, by cutting it down. I'm going to use a Dremel with a cutoff wheel and I'll go over this with you. I'll show you how I do the mod. Um, but anyway, these frames, carbon fiber, look really nice. Um, no issues with them at all. Uh, and, uh, and I'm just going to basically uh, do the, uh, the battery tray drop mod. Now, um, I do have some information uh, about some aftermarket uh, frames that uh, you could use if you're not comfortable cutting. Uh, I'll probably cover that later. I'm going to try and get my hands on something. But um, in the meantime, uh, I want to cover for the people that are interested in this particular mod. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I don't know if the battery choice that I'm going to make is going to necessarily require it. Uh, but that's okay. It doesn't hurt to do it. Uh, it just takes time and, uh, and a little bit of, uh, of cutting. So I'll show you my method to get this thing done. Uh, it's pretty simple though. And, uh, and then we'll move forward with the rest of the frame uh, assemblies. Cool? Cool. Alright, so the next thing I did uh, was just take some masking tape and I taped both sides of this and then basically put the sticky sides of the tape together uh, so it's covered. Uh, I did this for two reasons. One is uh, I wanted to, to have something that I could uh, put my, my cutting line on. Uh, I'm going to use a black uh, sharpie and putting the tape on and then using a sharpie on the tape will show up really well uh, and make it easy to cut. Also, um, this will help uh, contain any splintering in case there's any ch risk of that. I don't know if it'll help for, for carbon fiber dust. I doubt it. Um, but anyway, I just decided to, to tape both sides uh, on both frames. And the next thing I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut these at the same time. I'm going to try that. Um, number one, I think uh, if it doesn't give me any problems, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock them into a vise, uh, but if it doesn't give me any problems, this will be the best way to guarantee that both sides are completely equal because they're cut exactly the same. Um, time will tell if that was a smart idea or not, but you know, I'm going to take some of the same tape and just basically tape um, these frames together, making sure everything is all nice and lined up. And I could do something like this here. And really all that matters is that you're getting those edges. And then I'll get the other edge here. And then I'll probably do uh, up here. Basically, I just want to make sure that everything is nice and lined up and is perfectly straight. So if all of my marks, all of my cutouts are perfectly lined up, that means with some reasonable certainty this top piece here is going to be equally uh, aligned. So I'm um, just going to do a couple more. In my opinion, it's worth the uh, small amount of time and tape it takes to uh, 
do this on as many edges that I can so there's no risk of it slipping in the middle of cutting. As a matter of fact, now that I'm doing this, because this was kind of a showing you as I think of it kind of a thing, it almost been better just to take tape and wrap around the top. I did want it on both sides where I was cutting because I uh, I didn't want it to uh, to splinter on on the inside, let's say. But uh, I don't know; it might have been easier just to to cover that and wrap it across. But it's nice and smooth there. Uh, I'll put one more on this bottom piece. Alright, so those things are kind of locked together now which means I can take my cutoff wheel with my Dremel and then run uh, run one time and hit them both. Uh, and then I will probably set them in the vise, something like that, which will also help to lock them down. Just showing you, I still have to do my, my cut or my uh, make my mark for the cut. But as you can see, that'll hold nicely and I can just run, without having to hold on to the frame myself, I could run that cutoff drill. I'll have to uh, lock down this vise. It's got a suction cup thing on it, which is kind of cool, so it locks it to a smooth surface. Uh, doesn't really work well on concrete or what, uh, whatever, countertops it does. So I'll try and find something to, to fix it down onto. Uh, I am going to do this outside because we're dealing with carbon fiber dust. Uh, definitely not something you want to play around with indoors if you can help it. Um, additionally, I'll be wearing a face mask and safety goggles and uh, trying to be in a place where I have good positive uh, airflow. Um, so the next thing I want to do is get a straight edge and a, a sharpie and uh, draw my marks for cutting. Alright, so I made my first line with my straight edge and basically what I did is aligned it uh, to the bottom uh, of this uh, this slot here. I'm going to basically cut that slot and everything above it off. Uh, I ran it from end to end and then uh, you know here in a minute I can work on I've got to be able to to come up here uh, in front of this servo mount. I don't want to go all the way to the servo mount like I have the line drawn so I'm going to have to to figure out a, uh, a method there and probably round that a little bit right there so uh, I need to figure out how much room uh, I need to give myself for the servo mount here. Alright so here's what I decided to do. Um, I looked at the measurements that I had surrounding uh, the servo mount already. I just measured this top top bar here which as you can see is uh, 8.11 millimeters and then all I did was transfer that measurement uh, to here and basically drew my vertical line, made two dots, made a dot there, made a dot there, then used a straight edge to uh, connect the dots. And uh, basically, essentially what I have is, you know, fairly uh, equal distance around the, the servo. So I think it'll be fine. I did pull out the battery tray. And if you look at where the battery tray mounts uh, by default, um, it's well uh, before that point that I just drew and if I drag that down to the new mounting location uh, you can see it's going to come up uh, maybe right about there so I, I think it'll be fine um, I'll have all the same room uh, that I would have on the battery tray before without a whole lot of uh, extra material cut off that I didn't need so anyway that's where I decided I'm going to make my marks. What I'll do later on then is I'll probably round this off a little bit uh, to take away the sharp edge. Same thing with this. But anyway, that's, uh, that's where I'm at. 
Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go outside, uh, clamp this in a vise, get it the vise securely mounted, uh, so I don't have to worry about holding this in the Dremel, and use the Dremel cutoff wheel, and uh, and just cut it down. Uh, again, using safety glasses, and uh, also using uh, uh, a mask. Uh, carbon fiber is uh, that dust is pretty nasty stuff. So if you're not comfortable. Uh, don't even mess with it. Seriously, um, uh, there are people who would suggest carbon fiber is just as nasty as asbestos uh, in playing with it. So you uh, you really want to uh, to think carefully um, before you start really generating carbon fiber dust. So uh, I'm comfortable with it in uh, in the right conditions, right? You know, outside, uh, not doing it inside my house, uh, and uh, and using a, a mask and glasses. Uh, for the work, but uh, you know, I uh, I want to get in, get it done, get out, and not play around with that dust too much. So anyway, uh, that's how I'm going to do it, and uh, hopefully here you'll see some positive results. All right, so here's my little setup. Uh, sorry, I'm still wearing my mask, so uh, sorry if you can't hear me very well. I'm going to leave it on. I'm going to do some sanding, uh, but you can see uh, how that worked out. Um, you can also see what I'm using as my little workbench out here. Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. I needed a smooth surface to mount my vise to, and uh, this uh, seemed to work out great for that. Um, but you can see uh, the decision to tape them all together and cut them at once seemed to work out okay. Uh, you can see the two pieces I ended up cutting off were pretty much identical, uh, which is what I was hoping for. Uh, so that's that. Uh, I decided I'm going to uh, I'm going to round this edge here, but I'm going to do it by sanding. I'm not going to I'm not going to use the cutoff wheel for that. I'm just going to sand it around uh, uh, and kind of smooth it out. Um, but I'll sand all these edges down, and then when I'm all done with that, uh, I'll bring it back inside. Uh, I'm going to go change clothes, throw my clothes into the wash, get rid of this mask, and uh, and then we'll move forward. All right, so now what I want to do is drill the holes uh, for the mounting of the battery tray. Uh, basically what I want to do is, is take this piece that I cut off and use it as a guide uh, for my other uh, my holes. So what I want to do is take my handy tape here, and I'm actually going to tape these two together again. I'm going to do this once and only once. So I've got a, a newly cleaned uh, frames and I'm just going to tape them together in some key spots so that everything lines up. You could have done this uh, probably all in one step, but I wanted to take a look at it, get it cleaned up before I started looking at drilling my holes and make sure I had everything the way I wanted it. So just like before, all I'm doing is, is picking some big spots here to tape together uh, so that uh, it doesn't move on me when I'm working on it. And I can do them both at the same time, and they're both identical. Alright, that's good enough. Um, so these things are, are tied together. I'm going to take one of my uh, top pieces that I cut off. I want to align it this way and I want to align it over the top. So over the top, matter of fact, I'm going to leave these untaped so that I can strap them together with this thing on there. Alright, so there's my first piece of tape um, having it lined up and then I'm going to take another piece of tape and tap down this this corner here. All right, there we go. I'm going to put another piece of tape There we are. So now as you can see, my holes are exposed. I'm going to use those as guides for drilling. Uh, and basically I'm going to be drilling through um, both frames at once. And I found out uh, the holes in my frame appear to be about a 332 inch drill bit. So 
Um, maybe a touch bigger. Uh, maybe the metric equivalent of that. Uh, but at any rate, that's what I'm going to use, and I'm just going to drill straight through uh, using this as a template. So that's next. All right, so here we are with the finished product. Um, basically, the dropped battery mod on the uh, 500 frame. This is the old uh, old style Align frame, but the uh, as far as I know, the only frame that comes with the uh, Taro version of the 500 kit. Uh, so as you can see, I've got my holes drilled. Might be a smidge tinier, uh, but not by much than these other holes, but I think everything will be fine. Um, and that is it. Everything is uh, lines up uh, identically, uh, just like it came from the factory like this. Uh, so uh, first of all, I do want to point out, I did use the same precautions when drilling as I did with cutting. Uh, I used a mask. Uh, I wet down, washed this off, and uh, got all the dust off before I brought it into the house. Uh, and I'm going to take my clothes and go throw them uh, in the washer immediately to as not uh, have any dust particles hanging around. <clears throat> um, but, you know, like anything else, there's a lot of different ways this could be done. Uh, there's a lot of people who won't ever even need to do it. Um, and then those that do need to do it um, may choose different, different ways to accomplish the same task. It's kind of like, you know, there's probably a thousand ways to put thread locker uh, onto a screw. Uh, there's equally probably hundreds or so ways that you could achieve this. Um, I actually followed a guide um, that I found on online. Uh, it was mycoolheli.com. Um, had kind of a write-up on it. Uh, I thought it was kind of kind of helpful and probably one of the most interesting uh, places that I've seen. Lots of people talking about how to do this. So I didn't come up with this. I didn't invent the method. Uh, all I did is did it for my own build. And because uh, I'm documenting the entire part of my build, including modifications I make, you get to see me do it. But I didn't make this up. So. Um, I appreciate all of those of you before me who have come up with this idea. Uh, it seems to be the right way to go because that's the way the frames come now pretty much these days. So uh, at any rate, uh, that, uh, that covers the, uh, the drop battery tray uh, frame mod. So the next part of the build, I'll start putting the, actually the frame assembly together uh, per the manual. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.